In episode 81, the previous episode, we talked about the uses of the stack to temporarily hold the values that are in, in registers. And so if I wanted to, for instance, use a couple of my registers, maybe they've got data I wanna keep, but I'm not ready to use yet. I just need to store it somewhere temporarily. The stack is the perfect place to store that. Turns out there are a lot of uses for the stack, and let's talk about a couple more beyond just storing data to get it out of the way. If I were to have some sort of a function, and I'm going to do kind of a, 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 a well, I'm going to use a C kind of language, um, but just let's put it this way. I've got an int returned from a function called mult that receives two ints. All right, so there is the prototype for my function. All it does is I pass two parameters, a and b, to it, both integers, then the function multiplies them and returns an integer. Now, you know, throughout my program, so I've got my actual program here, and maybe I say c is equal to mult five, and six. And then a little later on, I have D is equal to mult 92, negative 42. And then a little later, I have E is equal to mult uh, 59 and 82. All right. Now, somewhere down here, I actually have this function, right? So I've got mult int a int b, and then inside, I'm just gonna simply do a return of a times b. Not much of a function, but hey, you get the idea. But the key is, is we're not talking about functions here, we're talking about the stack and the use of the stack. And there are a couple of things that are really important to note here. First of all, when I have, what happens when I call the mult function in order to jump down here to perform an operation and return the value. Well, remember, how do you jump anywhere in a, uh, in, in a CPU? Well, you load the instruction pointer. Remember a couple of episodes ago, we talked about or introduced this, the instruction pointer or program counter. And all we, all we need is the address of mult. All you do is whenever you see this, you say, oh, okay, I just need to load the address of mult into the instruction pointer, program counter, and it'll automatically, the next instruction to execute will be from that function. That's all well and good, but how do I get back? I mean, I can't down here just simply say, load the instruction pointer with the address that follows this instruction because I'll jump back successfully here, but whenever I get to this instruction and I jump down here, then what'll happen is I will jump back or return to the wrong place. I can't hard code the return address in my function. I need to have some way of knowing what the return address is. Now, if you remember, the instruction pointer contains the address of the next instruction to execute. So when I'm executing that instruction or the call to that function, the call to that subroutine, the instruction pointer is actually pointing to the next, next address. So guess what? Right before I jump here, right before I do this jump, down to here, right before I load the instruction pointer and stomp or on or lose the value that is here, I've got to store that somewhere. What would be a good place to store that? Well, some processors have something that's called a link register. And a link register says, I'm going to simply put that return address into this new address register. And that, and then at the end of this function, I'm just gonna take the link register value, put it into the instruction pointer, and guess what? The next instruction is gonna come back there. Problem is, is there's only one link register. What if inside of this function, I call another function? And maybe inside of that function, I call another function. So it's really good to have a foolproof way to keep storing all of these return addresses. And so what we do as part of this call here is we push 
IP, the instruction pointer, the program counter. And that way, it's on the stack when we f jump into this, into, this, uh, in the, into this function. Now, it is possible that inside of this function, we're gonna use the stack, but remember our plate analogy. As long as I take off exactly the same number of plates that I put on, then the stack pointer will be pointing to the exact same memory location it was when we came into the function. And so right here, all I gotta do is pop the instruction pointer and it'll grab off the stack that value from the that'll that that was the return address puts that in the instruction pointer guess what the next instruction we execute is that one right there and it comes back exactly where we wanted it to and if you do the same thing for each of these function calls then you'll always return to exactly where you're supposed to be but think about it this way if inside of my function, I pushed one more thing than I popped, I stored one more thing to the stack than I retrieved, then my stack pointer is gonna be pointing to the wrong plate, the wrong plate for, a, uh, for lack of a better term, in the stack. And when I do this pop, guess what? It's going to grab something that wasn't the return address and return to that address, which puts us goodness knows where, anywhere might even send us to processor never, never land, all right? So we've already talked about using the, the stack to temporarily store register values just to make room, but now we also have, it can be used as a place to hold a return address for a function. Some processors also pass variables by pushing these values, and they won't be pushing five and six, but you get the idea. What it, What's happened is they'll load five into a register and push it, and then they'll load six into a register and push it. And so the stack could also be used to pass parameters from the calling function, to come from the instruction where we call the function, down into the instruction, into the, into the function itself. And it just takes a little bit of manipulation of, and, and it's not actually manipulation. What you would do is you would copy the stack pointer to another register. Could be the base pointer, BP. There's a number of pointer registers in the processor. And then use offsets from that to find the data that we're looking for. Some processors do use registers, so they will say, for example, always use R0 to pass the first value, always use R1 to pass the second value, but some processors use the stack to pass data back and forth. If something happens to the stack and we don't, we don't handle things properly, once again, we'll grab the wrong data, we'll operate on the wrong data. Some processors even use the stack to return a value. So whenever it comes to the operation of functions, they depend greatly on the use of a stack pointer. And if that stack pointer gets messed up, corrupted, a corrupted stack pointer, our functions won't operate properly, or when they return, they will actually start, they will actually try to start executing code that is not what we had intended to execute. 